time. Hello there. Space. And the Force is what gives the Jedi his power. Reality. It's energy. It's around. It's around. more than a linear path. It binds us. The prism. It binds the galaxy together. Of endless possibility. You wanna buy some death sticks? I can hold it. Your single choice can branch out into infinite realities. Do you have something, a cowl or something you can put on? Your whole body. Creating alternate worlds from the ones you know. The year is 34 ABY. The scrappy resistance has just destroyed the First Order's planet-killing superweapon built into the ice world Ilum, and has been forced to evacuate their secret base on Dakar. Meanwhile, the scavenger Rey has traveled to the planet Ock 2, seeking aid from reclusive Jedi Master Luke Skywalker. Although her training with Luke has so far proven futile, as his stubborn outlook on his role in the galaxy still prevents him from finding further purpose, Rey received a rather startling revelation in the form of the Force Dyad that connected her to her most hated enemy, Ben Solo, aka Kylo Ren. Their first connection occurred when she was alone in her room. Kylo's sudden appearance startled Rey, causing her to fire her blaster at him instinctively before being forced into an angry yet brief conversation with him. Their connection severed and they were both left perplexed. When their second connection was established, Rey met Ben with similar vitriol. After their second connection dissipated, Ben became even more intrigued with the hidden power that was obviously emanating when they were together. But Rey remained uncooperative with his attempts to gather information about her side of the dyad. He needed to devise a plan that would alleviate Rey's hatred toward him, breaking the ice for Ben to delve further into what was causing these strange new events. After meditating for a considerable amount of time, Ben had finally concocted his master plan to lure Rey into further conversation. He would need to take his shirt off and show her his stout upper body. It was a technique he often used if someone resisted his mind probing with the force during an interrogation. Every time, the being who gazed upon his boxy frame had all their defenses immediately assaged. He kicked himself for not thinking of using it on Rey during their encounter on Starkiller Base. But nevertheless, it wasn't worth dwelling on the past when there was work to be done. Due to the unpredictable nature of his new connection with Rey, Ben had to walk around the Supremacy shirtless all day in order for his plan to work which made it hard to accomplish anything due to the crew's fixation on his physique. Realizing his alluring power was too great, Ben returned to his room and waited. When a third connection finally formed with Rey, Ben feigned obliviousness, as if she had dropped in on him at a bad time, icing her rage and instilling a bit of embarrassment in the scavenger. Despite her embarrassment, Ben did not falter. As she asked him why he killed Han Solo, he continued to walk closer and closer to her, allowing her to bask in the presence of his bodacious bod. When their third connection ended, he knew his plan had been a success. And a success it was. Rey had suddenly felt a strange pull towards Ben that she had never felt towards anyone before. She tried to convince herself that the bond between the two of them meant the Force wheeled them to meet aboard the Supremacy. But subconsciously, Rey always worried that maybe it was the swole that drew her to him. If she was being honest, she had never seen someone that swollo in her life. We all know the story after that. Rey travels to the Supremacy, Snoke is killed, the Resistance survives, Rey defeats Ben aboard the remains of the Death Star 2, Ben heals him, Ben turns back to the light, and together the two of them defeat Palpatine. But in a different reality across the multiversal plane, Ben Swole, I mean, excuse me, Ben Solo chose a different route. In this reality, we begin with Ben still reeling from his second encounter through the Force Dyad with Rey. His attempts to gather information regarding the strange circumstances of their sudden random connections have fallen flat. So far, Rey has been uncooperative, going as far to declare Ben a murderous snake. He had tried to handle the situation civilly. He decided that he wouldn't make the same mistake a third time. The next time the two should meet, Ben would show Rey his true power as the mighty Kylo Ren, the creature in a mask she once feared. Ben waits for Rey's eventual third appearance. When she finally appears, he toys with her, attempting to get her to drop her guard, appeasing her with answers to all her questions. As Rey becomes increasingly comfortable talking to him, Ben begins to put his plan into action. After their second meeting together, only Ben was aware that the strange connection between the two of them had progressed from that of a sort of holographic apparition, as was the case in their first meeting when Rey shot him without any harm coming to him, to full physical manifestation as the rain droplets appeared on his hand after their second meeting. Ben supposed that although he couldn't see Rey's surroundings, the power that bonded them might have progressed far enough that physical touch between the two of them might be possible. As the conversation progressed, Rey circled back to Ben's murder of Han Solo. Ben knew this was the time to strike. Rey's despair over her longing for a family clouded her judgment. Ben endured her verbal attack, and while doing so, he called his lightsaber to him that he had hidden in the back of the room, igniting it as it fiercely flew towards its target. Rey realized what was happening far too late. Ben's lightsaber struck Rey in the chest, killing the last spark of hope that the galaxy had left. The connection severed immediately as Rey passed. Holding the lightsaber in his hand the way he did when he removed his familial weaknesses, Ben began to rediscover his purpose. 
He had been lost after his defeat at Starkiller Base, but the only one to ever stand in his way was now dead. It was time for him to begin the next phase of his plan. Ben has his mask repaired by the armor of the Knights of Ren, Albrecht, aboard the Knights of Ren's transport known as the Knight Buzzard. While he was gone, the scrappy remains of the Resistance had proven more dangerous than previously anticipated. One of the Resistance cruisers, known as the Raddest, launched into light speed, destroying itself as well as the majority of Snoke's fleet, and most of his dreadnought. Seeing this as the opportune time to seize the power he feels he deserves, Ben dons his new mask laced with streaks of red, calls his knights to him, and begins his hunt once again as Kylo Ren. When Kylo arrives back on the location of Snoke's former fleet, He's informed that Snoke and his remaining forces have pursued the last survivors of the Resistance down to the salt mining planet Crate. Enraged at the destruction of his fleet, Snoke personally wants to see to the death of the Resistance once and for all. The Resistance forces attempt to fight off the First Order siege of their old decrepit Rebel Alliance base with skim speeders, but their forces are no match for the overwhelming might of the First Order. All the speeders and their pilots are destroyed and the walls of the base are breached. Snoke's shuttle lands at the entrance of the base, where he is met by Leia Organa. An epic duel of forced power ensues as meanwhile the Night Buzzard arrives at the base carrying Kylo Ren and the Knights of Ren. Momentarily distracted by her son's appearance, Leia lets her guard down just enough for Snoke to strike. Using an unchecked, powerful burst of Force Lightning, Snoke unleashes his final attack on Leia, defeating her, but using up much of his strength. Seeing Snoke's current weakness, Kylo instructs his knights to kill all of the First Order and Resistance forces remaining in the base. Kylo then moves on Snoke, countering his burst of Force Lightning and ultimately ending the Supreme Leader's reign once and for all. The galaxy was now his. Without opposition, Supreme Leader Kylo Ren led his forces across the galaxy, conquering key planets and establishing the First Order as the only legitimate organized governmental power left in the galaxy. A year after his reign began, Kylo was called to Mustafar by the sudden appearance of the voice of Palpatine. Using the Sith Wayfinder he was meant to find, Kylo tracks the mysterious voice to the planet Exegol where he discovers the undead corpse of former Emperor Palpatine, the cult of the Sith Eternal, an entire Sith fleet dubbed the Final Order. After some goading by the former Dark Lord, and with the fear of losing his power to a zombified monster, Kylo strikes down the body of Palpatine, unleashing the spirit of Sidious, which overwhelms and consumes Kylo. Kylo Ren and Darth Sidious were now one and the same, and with the combined might of the First Order and Final Order, there would be no one to stand in their way of galactic domination. The Darth Sidious possessed body of Kylo Ren took command of the bridge of the capital Sith Dreadnought. As the ship began its ascent into orbit, Sidious looked through Kylo's eyes at their reflection in the bridge's glass windows. And with the lust for power now all but satisfied, Palpatine really began to appreciate the work Ben Solo had done crafting this body for him to occupy. As the Sith fleet locked in the coordinates for its destination for domination in the Navi computer, Palpatine's final thought before once again revealing himself to the galaxy at large was, Look at yourself, Sheev. You're one swore Sith. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching the second episode of Star Wars What If. Again, comment below and let me know what you thought of this video and what I could do for future episodes of Star Wars What If. Also, if you haven't yet, please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for continued Star Wars content. We're on our way to 1,000 subs and every subscriber would really help us out. Thank you all so much for watching and we'll see you next time.